Hey, welcome back in. Well, technology today is changing the way we live almost daily, and it's really the same in the world of sports, too. Did you know that research right here in Birmingham is changing the way that athletes perform? And Britton Lynn uh, not only does traffic, but she has been looking <laughs> into this, uh, how science meets sports in a special report. So what would you find out? Yeah, it's a pretty funny story and how it all got started too. In 1989, the world-renowned Dr. James Andrews, which mm -hmm. we all know here in Birmingham, found a successful mechanical engineer, Dr. Glenn Fleissig, and he told Dr. Andrews, I want you to put me out of business. I want you to figure out why all these baseball players are getting hurt, and then let's put a stop to it. Now jump ahead 24 years and now just a few miles down the road at St. Vincent's Hospital, the American Sports Medicine Institute is doing just that. Major League Baseball teams have gone to ASMI's Biomechanical Lab as well as eight Cy Young Award winners. But really it's open to anyone. If you've ever wondered what goes on in sports research, you're about to get an inside look. This technology, the offspring of a marriage between science and sports. We were able to see things we never were able to see before. To break down the mechanics into a, a video game life. And being able to identify problems before they start. It, it opens your eyes to things that, that the human eye can't see. Feedback you won't get in an everyday baseball practice. But you can get in a lab like this one, where scientific formulas are mixed with a library of baseball's most elite pitchers. Biomechanics is biobiology and mechanics, and so basically it's using the laws of physics to see what's the best way for this person to move. If we can make someone's mechanics as good as possible, then they will minimize the chance of getting hurt and also maximize their performance. For the biomechanical evaluation, 38 reflective markers are placed on each athlete. Then the eight infrared cameras around the laboratory are each used to capture those reflective markers at 450 pictures a second, which the computer then uses to create the data. Once the foot contacts, you rotate your pelvis, your upper trunk, your arm goes back, it goes forward. The coaches at Sanford University use feedback from biomechanical testing to give them an edge. How is what you see in the biomechanical lab different than what you would normally see as a regular coach? Now we have the ability on our phones to video a guy and slow motion it and put it into analysis and measure angles off of an iPhone. The speed and, and the slow motion that they can show us uh, you know, on the video angle and then also just to be able to get the different measurements and the comparisons. Which in turn eliminates costly pitching flaws. So when you get to more of the elite level from college and up, it's really hard to see with your eye if someone's hip rotation is a little slow, their trunk tilt is a little out. We're looking for differences that are five degrees off. Their mechanics are a little off and they do it a little wrong again and again and again and the repetition ends up being a, a tendon or a ligament injury. Obtaining the test results is the first step. But Dr. Fleissig and his staff at ASMI spend a great deal of time explaining the significance of the detailed data to both the coach and the athlete. So this is about the time when you have the maximum external rotation as we saw from the other view. But your, your armpit angle, your abduction angle is low. The way the shoulder works is it's, it has the most range of motion up here, but you are dropping your elbow here. You're costing yourself uh, performance and possibly safety. In the baseball world, it's said that you need 100, 180 degrees between your internal and external rotation. And right now they say I'm at 160. So I mean, I'm lacking 20, 20 degrees and they say it's mostly from my internal. Making changes to the throwing motion can present a challenge for coaches as they work to create drills and stretches that correct the athlete's mechanical flaws that are usually only slightly off. Now we're giving coaches information they never knew before, such as someone is late in rotating his, his pelvis, or in Mark's case, his arm is just a little low. You know, when we get someone at 18, 19 years of age, you're asking them to change things they've done for a lifetime. And, uh, and that's difficult, if not impossible, to do sometimes. The student athletes that we're getting are accustomed to utilizing the technology. And if we can get our kids to feel the difference between right and wrong, then that is something they can improve and fix. The more we can mesh the, the old school coaching aspect with the new technology, uh, the better it's going to be for our athletes. Now we recently caught up with Mark who said that his pitch has gone up eight miles per hour since visiting the biomechanical lab. Now the neat thing is that ASMI's testing doesn't just stop with baseball players. It's also being used to check techniques in all kinds of sports ranging from football and golf to cheerleading and cricket. 
The advanced technology has even helped to develop new strategies for physicians in the operating room. Yeah, I like that aspect of it. You hope it just doesn't make it too much of a mechanical thing and they mm -hmm. still just <laughs> enjoy the sports. So for this facility, though, can anyone be tested? Absolutely. Anyone can go. It is a nonprofit, but they do charge a fee. But the goal of the biomechanical lab is primarily injury prevention. Now, if you want more information about the biomechanical lab or want to get tested, all you have to do is go to our website, myfoxale.com, and just look up the Good Day Alabama heading, and we'll have all the information on there. All right. It is fascinating, Britton. Thanks so much.